Broadway and downtown Nashville, the Music City. Always a lot happening, whether it's Friday night or any other night. A couple miles away on West End, Memorial Gym, that's where we are. It's opening night for college basketball for the 17-18 season. Vanderbilt in year two under Bryce Drew welcomes in Austin P to get things started. Kevin Ingram alongside Vanderbilt All-American Shane Foster are happier with us as well. Shane, opening night. You put in all that work in the offseason, the, the preseason practices and everything. Now you find out for real what you got. The blood is boiling. Juices are flowing. This is what college basketball is all about right here. Opening night, you're in your home court. Memorial magic is about to happen. Let's see what kind of memorial magic happens tonight. These two teams, very different in terms of experience. You're talking about the coaches and the players. Austin Pia, the first-year coach, and Matt Figger. Vanderbilt, they bring back 70% of the scoring for a team that went to the NCAA tournament with that late charge last season. You mentioned the NCAA tournament. Vanderbilt is having a bad taste in their mouth after losing last year, going home early. So I'm, we're looking to make sure that they come out and get things going in the right direction this year. Tough having a first-year coach come into this arena. It's going to be interesting to see how he handles it. And Matt Figger, a guy who, of course, was in South Carolina with Frank Martin. We know what they did last season. They went to the Final Four, so very good feelings about what happened last March for Coach Figger. But now he also finds out what he has in this Austin P. Griffith. It's kind of a bit of a reload with uh, Dave Luce no longer the head coach. Absolutely. He has some good guys on his team, some guys like Chris Button, Terry Taylor, um, Ugby. He's got a lot of talent, so he's going to be able to see from the get-go against the SEC opponent that's pretty tough how his guys are going to respond. Now, Shane is one of the great shooters in SEC history. We know that. Vanderbilt's trying to make it a 1,000 straight games with a three-pointer tonight, so it'll be cool to be here and be part of the history. You know at some point, one or more are going to go in. Absolutely. <laughs> they have a lot of shooters. Obviously, Riley LaChance leading the way in that regard, looking to get them up early, and they're going to play fast. They're going to get the ball out. They're going to move up and down the floor. They're going to have a smaller lineup, but they're going to be looking to get the shots up, and so that, that streak should keep going pretty fast here. Vanderbilt, the home white uniform. See Austin P there in the road reds. Good crowd here at Memorial Gym, ready to get this season cranked up. And Vanderbilt hopes it ends with another trip to an NCAA tournament when uh, March rolls around. Brian Shea, Jason Baker, Gerald Williams, tonight's officials. And we get it started with a jump ball that's knocked out of bounds, as he saw Vanderbilt's Jerry Baptiste and Austin P's Terry Taylor. Jump in the center court, Shane, a guy we won't see tonight for Vanderbilt, and that is Matthew Fisher Davis. Injury will keep him out for this opener. I know they hope to have him back very soon. Definitely. I think he got a little tweak that happened in practice. He said he should be back by Monday, so we'll see how that goes. And off, trying to fight around the screen, Larry Austin. And an offensive foul call on Vanderbilt on the first trip as they'll get Baptiste foul on the screen. You're going to see a lot of those kind of actions, handoffs, ball, um, dribble at people, those kind of moves. It's going to be important that they not pick up fouls in those situations. Chris Porter, Bunton, the leading returning scorer at six points per game last season. They really like the freshman Terry Taylor at 24 and 12 in their exhibition win over Swanee. 24 and 12, that's a lot of work right there. Vanderbilt, knock away, goes to Glott in the corner. Down to five to shoot. First trip for the Governors. Glada, dangerous pass. Taylor takes a long one. Austin P on the board first. The freshman from just up the road in Bowling Green knocks in the three-pointer. Freshman comes out, gets his first open look, knocks it down. That's going to bode well for his confidence. Larry Austin Jr., the Xavier transfer, getting his first start as a Commodore. You know what, Chance and Roberson, two of those seniors. The athletic Joe Toy and Jerry Baptiste, the redshirt sophomore. Starting five for the Commodores. The chance out front. Three Roberson, yeah. answer. And the streak continues. There it is. You know, it took about a minute and 20 seconds for Vanderbilt to hit the three, and that gives them 1,000 consecutive games. Vanderbilt one of only three programs to have hit a three in every contest since it started back in the 80s. Austin P continues. Good work from beyond the arc. Terry Taylor two for two. Two for two from three. Vanderbilt better learn. He's not passing up any open looks. They're going to have to close out a little tighter to him. You kind of appreciate the uh, freshman coming out firing. Uh, not a whole lot of hesitation there. Just pull the trigger. Absolutely. When you're a guy like that and you've averaged a certain number of points in, in high school, you definitely have the confidence 
Oh, that's he right in the chance coming down with the confidence as well. He's made a bunch of threes in his career. He was 48% from behind the line last year. Fast start. Two threes apiece. We're tied at six. I can appreciate as a senior Riley Lachance coming down, knocking down that shot, saying, hey, I know you're a freshman. You're not going to do it better than me in my <laughs> own gym. Riley, just an outstanding shooter, very versatile guard, can play either position. Taylor with Roberson guarding. Jumper offline for Avery Ugba. Vanderbilt a chance to take his first lead. Lachance falls off. And another foul will go, maybe two against Jerry Baptiste. Brian Shea signals number 12 for number two. And we'll see if Vanderbilt gets a quick sub. They will. Edge K. Obina will check in. So this is the first time Jerry's playing this kind of minutes early on in the season. Obviously, last year he was coming behind a great player in Luke Cornette. Now you see him starting the season out three minutes off the clock. He's got two quick fouls. He's going to have to be better in that regard. So we'll spend most of the first half watching from the bench. 6-6, six, six, two threes by Terry Taylor. Vanderbilt with connections by Roberson and Lachance. Trey Ivory. We don't have too many veterans on this team. He's one of them. Couldn't get it to fall off the window. Quite the battle for the rebound, and Obina comes off with it. One of the things, one of the things Vanderbilt will, will learn to love about, about um, Larry Austin, he is a tenacious defender. Very good player at Xavier. Roberson couldn't connect down there. Foul on the rebound against Vanderbilt. Obina. Vanderbilt's post player stacking up the fouls early on. Here's Roberson. He missed that shot, but that's a really good move in there by him. Talk about a guy who could do a whole bunch of stuff for a Roberson, whether it's defending, hitting shots, we've seen him get hot from three. They're, they're going to need him to work inside, though, with the very inexperienced group of post players. Absolutely. He's a guy that can face up, can knock down the three, put it on the floor, like you said. He kind of reminds me of Draymond Green from. Turnover here by Austin P. I don't know if he uh, talks quite as much as Draymond Green does, but. Not I, even I, close. I don't know that very many people do. <laughs> that is a tall order right there. Full court press. Man pressure by the governors. Vanderbilt gets it in play, and Austin P retreats. They were 11 and 19 last year, 7 and 9 in the OVC. And Dick to finish on down the line in the conference this season. This game, part of the NIT season tip off. Look at that spin move, wouldn't go. The follow was there by Roberson after the miss by Toy. We talked about all the different things Jeff Robeson can do. You see him right there waiting for the ball to come off. He's in perfect position to put the ball back in the basket. Ugba. Glada gets it back in the pick and pop. Ugba barely drew iron. Good job at Porter Button to dig it out. Governor's get another try. No oh, good on the three by Glada. Obina's grabbed a couple boards. Larry Austin got in the paint. Vanderbilt wants it to count. Thinking it got knocked up on the glass on the way down. No basket. 8-6 Vanderbilt early on. There's Jeff Roberson, the senior, a three and a two. Commodores by two at the under 16. Vanderbilt 8, Austin P 6. A little about a little over four minutes played here in the first half. See the huddle there for the Governors. Down from Clarksville, 17th meeting. Vanderbilt has won 14 of the previous 16, including the last 12 in a row. Shane, we saw this game a couple years ago in, on opening night. Vanderbilt won back in 2015, 80 to 41. Yes, that was a really, really good game. Shot the ball well, rebounded the ball well, played physical. Um, but you always know what you're going to get from an Austin P team. They're going to come in, they're going to play physical defensively. They're not going to foul a whole lot, so you can't expect to shoot a whole lot of free throws, which means you have to execute offensively. Very strange not to see Dave Luce on the Austin P sideline after all those years. He was there for 27 seasons. And Decided to retire after last year. I know he had some health problems. We wish uh, Coach Luce all the best. Here's Larry Austin Jr. at the foul line. First foul shot of the Commodore is no good. Out of the timeout. We talked about him being the uh, transfer from Xavier. Had to sit out last year. Joined the program 
the summer of 2016. Two years of eligibility left after playing 60 games for the Musketeers. Larry has a lot of heart, a lot of passion for the game. He works hard, incredible hard worker. I think he's going to be a really good point guard for the Vanderbilt Commodores. Corner is up by two. Early minutes of this one, we saw an exchange of threes to start the game. Boomer Button turned away. Florida wouldn't go. Ugba for the board got the stick back after the miss by Steve Harris, who checked in at the timeout. See, that's where you're missing DeJerry right there. DeJerry has a little bit more size to be able to go up and contest shots at the basket. Austin outside, defended by Harris. Toy. They move it to Lachance. The pull up. Offline, Obina crashed in the glass. Foul on the Governors. Call that one on Porter Button. Obina is in there working. He's working in the paint. You see him right here. Riley takes a good shot, but he's down there working. He's down there, got a body on somebody. That's what allowed him to come up with the foul right there because he fought so hard. Sometimes in basketball, you have to go after 10 just to get one. <laughs> Chance gets it back after triggering the inbound. This is a mismatch right here for Raleigh. Let's see if they take advantage of it. Crawls over Austin. Had it swatted, but got the whistle. Call that one on Ugba, his first three for Austin P. First appearance for Max Evans, the freshman from Houston. Also, we see Saban Lee, another freshman from Phoenix, Arizona, go in. Cleavon Brown, sophomore out of San Antonio. It's Bryce Drew brings wholesale subs. You're seeing a lot of the future for Vanderbilt Commodores on the court right now. Let's see how they handle the big stage. One senior and some inexperience in there. A chance with the delivery. They couldn't finish on the inbounds play. Saban Lee read that very, very well. Got himself to the spot, unable to finish at the basket. Back out it goes to Galata. They're touched by Deshaun Martin. The junior from Pittsburgh for Sauston P squad. Galata with 90 to shoot. Guarded by Lee. Galata may have been deflected. Like it was partially blocked. Vanderbilt gets a stop in a tie game. That was great defense by a freshman right there. Chance feeds the post. Brown going to work with the left and a nice finish. That looks great to Coach Bryce Drew. Trust me when I tell you, even though that didn't look so good in the transition defense. But when you see Cleavon getting down there, getting some confidence, scoring on his first basket of the season, they're going to need him to play well this year if they're going to be successful. That was a heck of a catch and score by Steve Harris. Got to yes. get back. Tied to 10. Lee about halfway through the shot clock. Taking himself here. Got to the rim. Lee's first two points. As a Vanderbilt Commodore gets Vanderbilt a two-point advantage. Saban Lee, he is not shy at all. Governors haven't been shy about pulling the trigger from three. Wouldn't go that time for Taylor. He's made a couple. End to end goes Maxwell Evans. One of the foul line. One of the things that you're seeing differently out of this team, Vanderbilt Commodores, right now than you've seen in the past. You saw two great possessions right there. Guys attacking the basket, getting there. A lot of youth on the floor. They're showing some great confidence getting to the basket, trying to finish, drawing some fouls. Great speed, too. How about Evans hitting the, hitting the gas? He took three dribbles and got to the rim just now. He'll step up for his first free throws. Top 20 prospect in the state of Texas. 11th ranked combo guard according to 24-7 sports. That's where it won't be free throws. It'll be an on-shooting foul on the inbounds. A delivery and a slam by Cleavon Brown. Cleavon Brown showing him 
This is where I work out. This is where we, we practice. This is where it goes down. That one went down for his third and fourth points. 14-10 Vandy. Seven and a half deep first half. Don Chuchic is in. On the move out with Steve Harris left side. Foul be whistled. It's a great inbound play right there. Anytime you can get somebody wide open coming to the basket, you got your point guard passing the ball in, so he's going to see the floor well, delivers it right on time. Cleavon Brown with the dunk. There's Carabina, meanwhile, pick up his second foul. He'll go out of the game in favor of Jeff Roberson. Smaller lineup on the floor right now. Cleavon Brown's going to have to play the five. We're going to see how that works out for him. Nice delivery underneath. Chuchak with a land. And already first possession, him playing a different position. He gets backdoor for a layup. Two-point game, Vanderbilt in front. Lee, talking about a mismatch. There was one right there. Couldn't make the layup. Chuchak contested just enough. Roberson went up and blocked it. They call a blocking foul on Vanderbilt's Riley the chance. Fifth of this first half. I thought Riley did a great job of making the guy go into his chest right there. Unfortunately, the points are going to count. Vanderbilt 14, Austin P 12. 12 minute timeout, first half. Season opener here in Nashville. Year two under Bryce Drew, a Vanderbilt squad that won 19 last year in that late season charge, got them in the NCAA tournament. They beat Florida three times to help get there. A lot of experience coming back. You play those games away from home in August, to help through the team bonding. And Matthew Fisher Davis, second team all conference. Saw him though outside the huddle there a moment ago. We're in a polo. You want to see uh, Matthew Fisher Davis in the uh, black and gold uniform? Yes, you do. A guy with his kind of size and that stroking touch that he has from outside the three, you definitely want to have that on the court. But rumor has it he'll be back on Monday, so it won't be long. Vanderbilt opening tonight here at home, and they'll go a couple miles away and play at Belmont on Monday night. All right, the free throw line, Trey Ivory. He's a senior from Louisville. Ross competes for his foul shots of the night. And even the game if he can make two, and he's halfway there. He's one of the experienced players for this Austin P group. The only four-year senior on the roster played 29 games last season. That was also part of the tournament team a couple seasons back for Austin P when they won four in four days and got to the NCAA tournament. Played Kansas. Trey Ivory coming off of a year where he shot 50% from the three-point line. Takeoff. They get it down court and a lay in for Evans. Maxwell Evans, he's a guy that averaged 32 points a game in high school. One thing I promise you he can do is score the basketball. The Vanderbilt hopes for leading by three. 32 is a lot of points. Yeah, even in high school it is. Terry Taylor was an outstanding high school player. He gets to the right bucket there for his first two-point basket. Hit a couple threes on the opening two trips for Austin P. Terry Taylor solidifying himself as the go-to guy for the Govs. Played for my alma mater. Won a state championship. Lee uses the screen. Spring roll and a slam. Cleavon Brown a couple flushes in this first half. Cleavon Brown, the beneficiary of a great pass from Saban Lee, showing you his great point guard vision right there off the ball screen. Juchek with a pass. Ivory with a jumper. A little short. Roberson pulls away the board. Roberson, deep one. Rebound went to Ivory after the miss. Good early pick and pop action right there. A swat out of bounds. There was Joe Toy. Joe he'd climb Toy. up there and get it in. You know what? I just love seeing Joe Toy run the floor right there. Didn't give up on the play. Got back in the action and got a block for his team right there. There's Porter Button. Thinking he had time and space. Toy. Sends it over to the man with the uh, dust mop. 
That's what you like to see from veteran leadership on your team. Guys that are going to give it up for the betterment of the team. Good delivery there. Good play. Scored a couple baskets. Back to a one point Vanderbilt lead. We near the midpoint in this opening half. Well, it's been a good spark off the bench. Kick out Toy. Offensive foul on Vanderbilt. Well, we'll get Maxwell Evans for his first. That is six for Vandy. And Austin P will have one and one after this. Good drive right there, but you got to know, and he'll learn. He's a freshman. He's going to learn. When you get in the lane, you do not want to leave your feet as a guard. Most of the time, that's going to end up in something bad happening, either a charge or a turnover. A lot good happened with Lee and Evans in the game. They go back out. Right with the chances back. Larry Austin is in. Also see Jerry Baptiste return. Picked up a couple early fouls. Guada in some trouble. Edba and Baptiste. Avery decided to put it on the deck. The grappling transfer all over the travel. Great defensive possession right there for the Commodores. But what you don't want to see is DeJerry with two fouls in a one on one situation in the middle of the floor. So as 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 a coach, you're kind of nervous about that situation. The Govs have switched their defense. They're coming out in the zone now. Chance couldn't catch Greenlee to take the three. Down to seven on the shot clock. Austin the pull up. Pops out. Baptiste. The chance. Bring it out. Riley the chance. One thing he's not going to do this year is pass up shots. He's had a great year last year shooting the ball from three. He's coming out with great confidence. He's made two today already. Always oh, been a terrific shooter. He kind of had that little stretch here in his sophomore year where I think some of that confidence was lost, but he's just too good of a shooter to be down for too long. Here's a hook by Taylor. And that freshman's looking precious so far. Double figures with Terry Taylor. Terry Taylor in double figures here against a good Vanderbilt basketball team. That is a good, good player right there who is very confident in his abilities. Ryan Roberson. Seeing good patience right here by the Commodores. Keep moving it. Lachance pulls the trigger. Not that time from about the same spot. But Roberson chases the miss. As a coach, you're okay with that. Whether it hits the side of the backboard or not, it's still one miss. Zone, toy. Trying to make the baseline jumper. Look what a play at, to the Gumps. Look at the energy that Jerry is giving you off the bench right now, coming in with two fouls. He got us one offensive rebound, and now he's fighting for another one. As you see, the pull up that missed right here. He's getting in position. He's down there fighting. Could have even got a foul call right there. Terry Taylor said, I need a breather, so he checks out of the game. Deshaun Martin goes back in. A good battle so far in this first half. Got a little over eight minutes to play. Vanderbilt 21, Austin P 19. Matt Figures debut as Governor's head coach. So far, so good. Ivory to Glotta for a corner look. Too strong. Austin in transition to the rack. The follow, Baptiste the trailer sends it home. The speed from Larry Austin and the energy from Jerry Baptiste. Mama, there goes that man. Six different Commodores in the scorebook in the first half with seven and a half to go. Straight away look, wouldn't go. Martin took it. Started to go one and done on Austin Pisa and as Roberson got the rebound. What great patience that Riley had off the ball screen right there, but Joe has to shoot that shot. Joe Toy. The turnover looking pretty good right there. The miss by Austin, the follow by Baptiste. Vanderbilt up four, first half, seven and change to play. Contributions from a bunch of different people already for Vanderbilt leading Austin Peay, 23-19. First half action, Memorial Gym. Part of the NIC, NIT season tip-off and you begin the season with Vanderbilt in the uh, preseason media bowl, middle of the pack. Kentucky and Florida, Texas A&M expected to be really good. Like that Alabama team, good nucleus of players. Missouri has reloaded with Conzo Martin on the job. And see Vanderbilt right there at number seven. 
this will be a very interesting year in this league. I think there are quite a few teams that are going to be quite a bit better. Absolutely. I was watching a little bit of the Kentucky game before we came in here, and they were down by 12 to, I think, a Utah Valley. And, you know, the, 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 the league is going to be wide open this year, and I think that the, the Commodores have a really good chance of surprising some people. Lead here by four against Austin P. Second of a double header on this court. Kickball. Ivory made the pass over to Chris Porter Bunton. One thing I haven't asked you about are the new baskets here at Memorial Gym. They, they played on those old ones for decades and uh, have brand new NBA style goals. Don't tell them how many threes you can make on those. This shall be interesting. <laughs> You know, when, when you're used to seeing things one way, sometimes the change is good, sometimes the change is a little awkward. Martin could make the three. Got a good look out of the corner. I like the I like the the fast paced offense that the Commodores are playing right now. The chance smooth on that jumper wouldn't fall. Seems like a noticeable difference in speed, especially with certain combinations of people on the floor. Runner wouldn't go for Ivory. Yes, you see DeJerry coming over, head hunting, ball screens right in transition. And what that does is it gets the action started immediately so that the first few possessions with the basketball, you're getting shots quickly. Got everybody on the team is able to get into a rhythm. Toy trying to connect with Baptiste, couldn't do it that time. Turnover back to Austin P with 6.20 to go. Here comes the exciting Saban Lee. Max Evans. Evans. Kind of get excited seeing those guys go back in. Man, they can cover some ground. They're so fast. They handle the ball well. Seeing them in transition, getting up and down the floor is going to be a, a joy this year. And oh, yeah, here comes Peyton Willis, who had a very good freshman year as well. Average five points a game and shot over 30% from three. Now, here's something that's interesting. If you remember from last year, Peyton Willis comes in. He's a backup point guard. Now you see him with this young lineup, and he's playing the three. So let us see if he's able to adjust. Willis at 6-4. Pretty small, but pretty fast lineup on the court for the Commodores. Taylor sends it back outside for Ivory. Well, with the small lineup, you can mix it up a little bit. But you see Peyton right here. Do stuff like that. Hauled down as he took it up. Great go against Ivory. Great defense right there. Reading the pass like a cornerback sitting back there waiting for it. Got the tip for it. Goes into his move. I think if his hand wasn't hurting, he could have got a shot up right there. But great job defensively leading into some transition right there. So that wrap on his right hand will take free throws. Willis was 62% of the foul line last year. The utility guy can play all the guard spots as Shane was talking about. Anytime that you can go from playing the one to two to three, sometimes the four, you just make yourself more usable for a coach. You just, the more you can do, the more, you know, coaches find ways to get you in the game. Not very many Vanderbilt players from Arkansas. Pete Willis is one of them from Fayetteville. Next two from the foul line. Austin P's gone over three minutes without scoring. Vanderbilt leads by six. Under six to play. First half. We took a lot of losses to Arkansas when I was playing, <laughs> so I'm going to give Peyton a pass. Okay. <laughs> Here's a takeaway and a wrap up as Deshaun Martin tied it up with Jeff Roberson. Official Jason Baker jumps in quickly. Now it'll be interesting to see how the referees handle this situation. Jeff Taylor had the ball in his hands and the guy was behind him. And even while the whistle was blown, he was, he kept edging that on. So it's good to see he's coming out of the game. Well, they'll call it a tie-up. Austin P will have it. They have the arrow. How is that a jump ball? Shot clock did not reset. It stays at 12. Governors bring Chris Porter button over to throw it in. He had a finger on the ball. I don't know how that turned into a jump ball, but. Sometimes the refs had to just make the call. Make the call and play on. Porter Button, they run out of time. Got the shot away, but it was an air ball, and Vanderbilt 
We'll have to throw it in. So nobody hurt after that exchange. Good patience right here by the Commodores. The Govs switching up their defense. Now they're playing a little bit of a 2-1-2. Two, two. Got a guy in the middle of the floor. We saw him. Vanderbilt get Joe Toy to the baseline for a jumper against his defense earlier in the half. Lee in the post. Baptiste. Vanderbilt running out of time. Consecutive shot clock violations. First Austin P and now Vandy. They put DeJerry in a tough spot right there, knowing with his back to the clock he can't see you know the, the time that's left over so he took a while to get into his move. Levon Brown will replace Jeff Roberson. Guards are taught to always know how many seconds are on the shot clock. Bigs are not taught that as much so if you give them the ball with three seconds left on the shot clock more more times than not something bad is going to happen. A close matchup all the way Vanderbilt's Six point lead, the biggest of the night for either side. Try to get it to a cutting Ugba. Vanderbilt breaks it up. Transition for a throw down by Cleavon Brown. And there again, you see the speed of Saban Lee getting the ball down the floor. And the beneficiary, Cleavon Brown, he has three dunks in this game today. He's the team leader in that department. <laughs> Vanderbilt 27, Austin P 19, 425 remaining. First half starts with defense. Saban Lee looking down floor. The look off and a jam. Cleavon taking it to the hole. Four twenty-five to play first half. Vanderbilt's biggest lead on the board up by eight. Austin P calling timeout after a third slam by Cleavon Brown. Just tuning in. Vanderbilt made it a thousand straight games with a three pointer back earlier in the night. 1,000 games with a three point shot. That is a lot of games. So you're in roughly, what, about 120 or so of that streak? <laughs> <laughs> a few. Austin P on offense, down eight. Matt Figger making his debut as the governor's head coach. Defensively, you're able to see the speed of Vanderbilt right here, pressuring up guards, even though the Govs did a great job of curling that screen right there, going right into a shot over the shorter defender. Glada with the delivery to Porter Bunton. And that curl. If the Govs are going to have a chance to win this game, Bunton has got to come up with more scoring. He led their team. He's the leading returning scorer for their team. Continue with the zone. Willis. Kind of hard to play zone against Vanderbilt with some of the shooters they have. And Peyton Willis connects from three. 31% last year. That gives Vandy nine point advantage, three and a half to go. See, that's some veteran confidence that you see right there. Last year, he would have never taken that shot. Harassed and a takeaway. Lee with the lead. Willis from the other side. Make it again and one. Saving Lee again, pushing the ball in transition. Willis saying, Give me another one, buddy. Give me another one. Defense leading the offense. You see the quick hands on the ball. Saban knows exactly where his shooter is. Feet are set. Confidence is good. Money in the bag, coach. Steve Harris gets his second. Yeah, foul a three point shooter. Makes a shot. Makes it a 12 point game and a chance to go to 13. Willis. He's been in very long, but has made some stuff happen. Misses the free throw. Doesn't get the four point play. Vanderbilt's first double figure lead of the night. A little over three minutes left. That curl again. Different players, same result. So, for Ron Benasser, check that out. Uh, Coyta McCarthy, I should say. For the average fan watching the basketball game, you see that happening. You're wondering why does that happen twice in a row? Well, it's the big's responsibility to step up and take away that curl opportunity. Our bigs didn't step up right there, and so they make the same shot twice in a row. Avery Ugba gets the foul. Gordon McCarthy uh, checked in a moment ago. Freshman from Spain. 
as a guard, you're curling screens like that. You're looking at the bigs, and if the bigs don't come up, you're taught to shoot that shot every single time. And so that's what you saw. Free throw pops out for Lee. You get the bonus shot. And you're probably going to see a similar play again. Well, they were looking for it. They were looking for it. McCarthy kind of backed away at the last second. Order button, free throw line, just missed. Threw a few hands. Comes Vanderbilt on the move again. That is some serious speed coming down the floor. He covers some ground. Brown couldn't get it go the first time. Stuck with it for two more. Brown and double figures. That was a very, very smart play by Peyton Willis. He knows he's made two threes. They're going to be running at him. Show him a little bit of a puff fake. Put the ball on the floor. Turnover barrage continues. A three on one. And Lee oh, with a big finish. There goes that speed. There goes Saban Lee. Welcome to Nashville, young fella. Getting him cranked up here at Memorial as Vanderbilt opens up a 14 point lead. Willis and Lee. Memorial, climbing the ladder. Memorial is going crazy tonight out here in Nashville, Music City. Great defensive play. And watch your head. Watch your head. Remember uh, Saban's father amply playing Florida State in the NFL back in the day. Rocking the rim right there. Saban, his mother is a Vandy Law School grad, so. Commodore connections already and making some fans on opening night the freshman from Phoenix. You know Kevin when it's in your jeans it's just in your jeans. Mm -hmm. You just have one way to go and that's hard. Everything you do is hard. And so you see Saban Lee right now. He's playing he's having fun but he's playing as hard as he can making a lot of things happen for the Commodores here tonight. Couple buckets five assists off the bench nine minutes. Under two, first half. That to be has been close, but Vanderbilt stretching things out. The curl didn't work that time for McCarthy. It's out of play to Vandy with a minute 52. You see the point guard going over and telling him, you didn't have to shoot that. I know you scored on it twice. They're going to keep running that action because it's getting good shots for him, but he got to be a little smarter and a little less trigger happy with the jump shot. Vanderbilt's been good from long range, five of eight from three for one of the nation's best three-point shooting teams last year. Lee looking to distribute turnover that time, close to it anyway, as was not going to bounce. Vanderbilt students right on top of the call. Bounce pass probably would have been a little bit of a better option in that situation. Anytime you're going to the basket like that, and there's a lot of hands in there, you want to use a bounce pass, get that ball up under defenders. Play the zone. Willis on the wing. He's been hot from three. Bounced a couple times. Followed by Roberson had it blocked, but we'll get to the stripe. The glue that holds it all together is Jeff Roberson being able to play multiple positions, do a lot of things on the floor. He's on the boards, giving you some coverage down there, even though they have the small lineup on the floor. Porter Bunt got his second foul. Love the confidence by Peyton Willis shooting that ball right there. He's made two. He's showing you he can make shots. So I don't have a problem with the jump shot. I love seeing Jeff Taylor in there getting on the boards. They're going to need that this year, playing a small lineup. Roberson for one more. See what he's done so far tonight. Make it seven points. A three, a two, and a couple free throws. Minute and a half to go, first half. The Govs coming out running this floppy action where they're getting curls on both sides of the floor. Two check to Ivory. They playing with two fouls. They have four with two personals. Glotta. They have forced that one, but made it anyway. Zach Glotta, he shot 35% from three last year. That was the most highly contested three that you've seen today. <laughs> Peyton put his hand on his forehead when he shot that shot and it still hit bottoms. The rainmaker went down. 13 under a minute. Willis skips it across. Look for Lee. Short. Vander will get another try with the offensive board by Brown. Taylor going after it stays with Bandy and 
The differential is about five seconds. Cleveland Browns got to do a better job of getting that ball back out quicker. You know they're going to swarm you. You got to get rid of that ball faster. But I love the effort and the energy on the rebounds from these smaller guys. See Dayton Gum make his first appearance. He goes in to replace Ivory. So he might be the most athletic player on this entire Austin P roster. Another that Bowling Green connection. Now with the action that they ran, they got two mismatches right now. They're going to choose the guard mismatch with Peyton Willis more than likely. 2-3 look. They lost the mismatch. Now they just got to play basketball. Lee up top, crossing over Glada. Double clutch, wouldn't go. Foul on the governors. So he missed that shot. But let me tell you how good that is. You get a good hard crossover, get the contact, move the ball a little bit, and still be able to put the ball up and, and give it a chance to go in. That's some strong athleticism from a point guard and a freshman point guard at that. He hung up there a long time trying to get that shot to go. Second free throw attempt of the night is successful. Tell you what, as a Vanderbilt fan, you really have to love what you're seeing in this opening act tonight by the young fellas from Vanderbilt University. Vanderbilt's biggest lead. Close to it anyway, up 15. Final seconds, first half. The kick out. Glada made another jumper as time runs out. Good job by Zach Glada. Connect a couple times. First from three, then a long two. Those shots always go in. I don't know why, <laughs> but if they can see the basket as the clock is going down, they always go in. Gum with a nice little delivery. Glada made the shot, but all in all for Vanderbilt, a good first half. Vanderbilt up 41-28 at the break. Vandy 5 of 10 from three, and we saw good work. The guards really making things happen. Uh, we saw good speed out of this Vanderbilt team in that first half. The speed is absolutely phenomenal, doing a lot in transition. It's really great, but it starts on the defensive end. Riley with chance and friends. Vanderbilt made it a thousand straight games for the three. 41 28 at halftime. Come back with more from Memorial Gym. Vanderbilt with the advantage after 20 minutes in Nashville. Our guy Max Hers leading the halftime contest here at Memorial Gym. Opening night, Vanderbilt 41, Austin P 28. Well, Veterans Day weekend. Good halftime feature coming up with Vanderbilt and some football players involved with our local veterans. Let's take a look. Um, yeah, so I was interning this summer at the Career Center and was just trying to look for something to do that was a little extra. There was this lady who came and presented this idea for an organization that she had been running called Medals of Honor. I'm Amy Cotta and I'm the founder of Medals of Honor and I'm the proud mother of United States Marine. Medals of Honor is a way for you and me to be able to let families of fallen service members know that they're not forgotten. Because at the end of the day, when the casseroles stop coming, the sympathy cards stop coming, these families often feel alone and isolated. And through Medals of Honor, we can let them know that their loved one's not forgotten. And so I'm mean, coming from a military family that's very something I'm very passionate about. I was really excited to kind of jump on. And so reached out to her right away, said, hey, I'd love to help. Myself, Caleb Scott, and uh, Amy all sat down at a Starbucks one afternoon. Just kind of talked about what Medals of Honor was, hearing how she started it, and kind of the, the heart behind it, and just like, fell in love with it right away. Medals of Honor and Vanderbilt teamed up together through Tommy. And uh, Tommy had come to us wanting to volunteer. It just seemed like a beautiful marriage, if you will between Medals of Honor and Vanderbilt. Being Vanderbilt football players, there's a lot of, uh, there's a big platform we can use to help kind of spread her message. So during the game, the Vanderbilt players are removing their name tapes and they're playing wearing the names of our fallen service members. And these are from all branches, all walks of life, from all over the country, no matter if it was killed in action, training accidents, or self-infliction. For this game, I have the honor of wearing Christopher Horton's jersey uh, and honoring him with his last name on my jersey. Uh, he was a 26-year-old Army specialist. He was a sniper uh, from Oklahoma, assigned to 1st Battalion, 279th Infantry Regiment, 45th Infantry Brigade, Oklahoma National Guard. So unfortunately, on uh, September 9th of 2011, Christopher Horton was shot uh, by enemy forces, and uh, he was just the age of 26. Uh, and I'm 22. Like, that's literally just four years older than me. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to think about that they paid the ultimate sacrifice 
uh, to, to serve our country, and, and we respect them for that. I'm honoring Staff Sergeant Brian Burgess, who died serving in Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan. He was described as friendly and athletic, played multiple sports in high school, including football, and it's just crazy to think that a few years ago, um, Staff Sergeant Burgess was um, playing high school football just as I was a few years ago, and it's, uh, I believe we really have to honor you know, his sacrifice to our country um, and his contributions uh, you know, to keep our homeland safe. So I have the privilege of honoring Lance Corporal Gearhart, who was in the 1st Marine Division. Uh, he passed away in 1997 in a training accident in Pendleton, California. He just loved sports, as all of us as athletes obviously can uh, sympathize with, and he was a huge Oakland Athletics fan. And I was born in the Oakland Naval Hospital, so uh, growing up in Jacksonville, Florida, we didn't really have a baseball team, so it was kind of in my heart that uh, athletics were a team I'd kind of turn to. So. Um, yeah, we're very grateful for his family to allow us to honor him this way. It was just a few months for his 23rd birthday when he was um, doing a training run with an LAV with a couple of his buddies and uh, they rolled down a hill in Pendleton, California um, and he died uh, in that crash. And um, it's kind of, it's a surreal thing to think about because I'm 23 years old um, so it kind of puts us in the same age where I, all I've done is uh, kick the football on a, on a field, you know. Um, and this guy uh, signed up to give his life for this country. Um, and it's just, it's very humbling, um, it's very inspiring, and shows that um, we got a lot, of, a lot of life left to live, and hopefully I can honor the sacrifice of guys like him who have, who have given all at such a young age. In addition to honoring Benjamin, uh, we really want to honor Wayne and Brenda, his parents, and his three brothers, uh, and just thank them for um, raising such an incredible man to, uh, that was willing to give his life for our country and to serve our country and um, protect all of us back at home. And so, um, from the very bottom of our hearts, we really want to thank you. Yeah, I definitely think this game is, uh, we're playing for more than ourselves. Uh, we're playing to honor those, those soldiers that have fallen. Uh, and that, that's a huge, uh, huge, huge piece of motivation for us, uh, just knowing that uh, we're playing a game at the end of the day. This is something that we love to do, uh, but they're, they're paying uh, the ultimate sacrifice, which is a lot harder than what we, what we want to do. So it, they're removed from their families, and uh, it's, it's really tough. But at the same time, they know that the, the work that they're putting in is going to help somebody else, and I think that's... Uh, really commendable and respectable, so I uh, just love honoring them in this, in this way. Anybody who gives their life to serve our country uh, it just deserves so much recognition and so much um, just gratitude. Those players wearing those names on the back of their jerseys means the world to these families. That that is a day that potentially the world's going to get to see, know, and remember their loved one and you can't, put, you can't put a price tag on that. Well, 41-28 the count here in Nashville. Halftime, Vanderbilt leading Austin P and its opener, Governor's down from Clarksville. This evening's game, Kevin Ingram, Vanderbilt great, Shane Foster. That was a pretty entertaining first half, wasn't it? Yes, it was. You saw the quickness. You saw the athleticism. Vandy has a lot of guards that can get up and down the floor, and they're making some good decisions in transition as well. Let's take a look at some of the first half highlights. You'll see a whole bunch of them from Vanderbilt. Good start, though, for Austin P. You see Terry Taylor, the freshman. First couple attempts of his college career went down. There's Jeff Roberson from three. That extends the streak to a thousand consecutive games with a three-pointer for Vandy. And Taylor with the answer on the other end. He had some hot shooting to start tonight. Riley Lachance doing one of the things he does best. But Shane, as we went along, a whole lot of this. Good work around the rim, getting to the basket, getting putbacks. Jeff Roberson doing a lot of the dirty work. Uh, Cleavon Brown doing a lot of the dirty work. Those guys have done a great job of applying pressure at the offensive basket. And you see Cleavon getting a few dunks right here. They're just playing great with a lot of energy, playing together, playing smart, and really playing as hard as they can. It's great to see. Cleavon Brown might uh, lead the country in dunks. He might. When you got guards that are pushing the ball like that, and then it started. He's starting on the defensive end. They're playing hellacious defense, getting their hands on shots, uh, getting their hands on balls, and it's leading to transition where Saban Lee gets a dunk like this as well. <laughs> Throw down. There's how it looked in the first half. Vanderbilt going five of ten from three, shooting 50 percent. Some high percentage looks. Good work around the rim. Rebounding advantage to Vanderbilt as well. You look at those second chance points. Second chance baskets will definitely get you in the win column during over the course of the year. 
Good work out of the Vanderbilt bench. Got 20 more minutes to play. Vanderbilt and Austin P. Cobblers up 13. Second half on the way in just a moment from Nashville. Vanderbilt leading Austin P. 41-28 as we begin play in the second half. The governor is with first-year coach Matt Figger, who was an assistant under Frank Martin, and part of that uh, South Carolina program went to the Final Four last year. Vanderbilt coached by Bryce Drew in his second season. Head coach here in Nashville, Kevin Ingram, Shane Foster, Doug Stanton, our entire SEC Network crew. Double header action tonight. Had the uh, the women's game against Middle Tennessee to start the night. Blue Raiders came out on top there as Rick Ensel got his 300th career win. Vanderbilt men, though, up 13 here at the break and will have the ball to start the second half. Original starting group on the court for Vanderbilt. With Matthew Fisher Davis injured, not available tonight. Plenty more firepower from those guard spots. Jeff Roberson with the left. Climbs up. Ended up getting his own miss for a moment. And the whistle blows finally, and the jump ball will go in Austin P's direction. Great move. Jerry Baptiste getting on the deck. Great move by Jeff Roberson. Great second effort. Can't bring the ball down after a rebound, though. You see the move with the left right there. His athleticism gets him the, the rebound. Once you bring that ball down, those guards can get to it. So the guys with Trey Ivory bringing it up the floor. Lost a whole lot off last year's team. This guy was the leading returning scorer, Chris Porter Bunton. Terry Taylor, number 21, outstanding freshman. That went a little too long for Avery Utba. The Govs turned it over on their first trip of the second half. You see the Vanderbilt guards extending the pressure out there, making those passes a little bit harder. So you see some typical actions that you saw last year from the Commodores. Roberson on the wing, little shake, call for travel. Roberson's they got to do a better job there of catching and making a decision. Anytime you wait like that and go into an ISO, usually something bad happens. So a minute deep second half. You see the turnover numbers. Teams combining for 15 tonight. Don't always have the most crisply played game first time out. High to low into Taylor. Couldn't get it to go at the rim, and Vanderbilt got the miss. That's he got a good look right there. He did get a very good look. Lachance with a scoop and score. With the left. Raleigh Lachance with the left hand finishing at the basket over the defense. One thing we've seen from him over the years, he's fearless about taking it into the paint. And he's very patient. He doesn't do anything that gets himself in trouble going to the basket. He doesn't mind passing the ball when he does. Baptiste able to get just enough battling with Umpa to get the tie up and get the basketball back for Vanderbilt. I think Jerry Batiste is really going to show the world how good of a defender he is this year. He's got a great body, great upside, and a really quick second jump, which is important. Last year was his first year of playing. Had a red shirt year to, you know, to get his feet under him, bulk up a little bit, and certainly he's done some great work in the weight room, as you can tell. To a little crossover. Turned away by Porter Button. Five to shoot. Austin with the spin. Porter Button with the takeaway. Too much dribbling right there for the Commodores. Coast to coast, Porter Button missed. Did everything but finish. They're good defensive play. There you see the Commodores. They held the ball a little bit too long, and the opportunity that they had was taken away. You want to be able to make quick decisions. You want to anticipate and make quick decisions. Corner look for a chance. A little short. Tip to the outside. And Joe Toy. What happened right there to Jerry Get thought to that Joe Toy was going to be outside the three point line. That's why he tapped it. But you got to be sure in that situation. Put two hands on the basketball. Steve Harris goes in for Austin P. As Galata goes to the bench. Saw Steve for a few minutes in the first half. You haven't seen anything from Taylor from the Govs yet the second half. He's very aggressive in the first half. I think he's going to have to play a little harder and be a little bit more aggressive if the Govs are going to have a chance. Had 10 points in the first half. Came out firing high off the window. Count that one and one. 
Great floater action right there. This is one of the lost parts of the game. Floaters are really tough to make, but they're a great option for smaller guards. You see him putting a little bit of a kiss off the high backboard there, getting the and one. Steve Harris played 13 games in his second season with Austin B last year and wraps up the three-point play of the junior from St. Louis. Five points tonight. Only scored 21 total in those 13 games last year. Lead 12 for Vanderbilt, but about three minutes, second half. Roberson to the corner. Wipe it off. Offensive foul. Jeff will pick up his first of the night. They're doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one moves right now. Roberson gets himself in trouble right here. He should have given up the ball after that first dribble. He took a second dribble and got himself too far into the paint. Got a charge. He had two Austin P defenders above the charge line. Well, business picked up when some of these uh, subs had just checked in for Vanderbilt entered in the first half. You got Saban Lee, Cleavon Brown, Peyton Willis. Here's the challenge. You, you look at the scoreboard and you're up double figures in the second half, but you got to come out and play with the same energy, the same effort that you did in the first half that got you that lead in the first place. Ivory sends it in. Ugba forces. Brown with a block. A chance with the recovery. Roberson steps into a three. Jeff Roberson, that's a good look for him. Bryce Drew is really happy with that shot. You see him clapping on the sideline right there. He's happy with that look. Riley Lachance has really improved his point guard skills. He sees the floor well. He's so patient. That's the thing I'm most impressed with him. He's so patient. He doesn't force anything. I've been pretty impressed with him playing the point over the last couple of seasons. He kind of wondered how it would go when they first decided to make that switch, and I think he's done a really good job. I think it expanded his game. He wasn't great against the pressure, especially full court, but it expanded his game. It allowed him to get comfortable putting the ball on the floor, getting to spots, and as well, being able to see the floor and get his teammates involved. Well, slow start for both sides. Begin the second half. Played about four minutes. A chance. A little short. Rebound, Roberson. Three. No good for Brown. But another tap by Roberson. You see him doing the dirty work. He's in there. He's the glue guy that keeps this team together. Lead remains at 12 for the Commodores. Now coming at the next stoppage. Saban Lee doing a good job getting around these screens, not giving up a shot. Ivory decides to fire. Miss that one badly. Offensive rebound, though. Wouldn't go for Richard Henderson making his first appearance in this game. Commodores. Taylor looked like he stepped out of bounds. Brown got hit in the face, it looked like. They did not do a good job of finishing that possession. Foul on Brown. Take us to the break. 15.09 to play. 43-31 Bandy. Well, if you're into hot chicken, you've come to the right town. That's a uh, scene from Party Foul. There you go. A couple pickles to go with it. <laughs> Shane, are you into the hot chicken? Well, that's not really my thing. I am not into the hot chicken. And being from New Orleans, you would think that I would like spicy food uh -huh. like that. I really don't. I'll be in there sweating, pulling <laughs> napkins from everywhere. And being from Kentucky, I like fried chicken, but I don't necessarily like hot chicken. I like spicy chicken, but hot chicken's kind of another ball game. It's, it's different. Yeah. It is different. I would have thought that would be right up your alley, being a Louisiana guy. You know, I can do the gumbo, the crawfish, oh, etouffee. Yeah. I mean, Nashville has some really good food too. Shrimp po' boys, man. Yeah. Oh my goodness. But I can't, I can't do the spicy. Here's Terry Taylor. He's from Kentucky as well. He was. All-Stater and part of a state championship team for Bowling Green High School. The first in that program's history. It's one of two free throws. It gives him 11 points in his collegiate debut. Austin P hanging around only down 11 as we played about five minutes here in the second half. Saban Lee driving the kick out. Corner look. Roberson 
He extended the streak to 1,000 earlier and has his second three-point make. Lead back to 14. Saban Lee showing you that he can get to the basket anytime he wants. Getting a foot in that paint, making his players better. Jeff Roberson, three-point shot in the corner. Well, back cut. Trying to make that bounce pass to Porter Bunton deflected in last touch by Willis. The pressure that Vanderbilt is extending with their guards is what opens up that backdoor cut. You haven't seen a lot of it from the Govs. I think they may start doing that a little bit more. Kind of overplay outside, and they can pay for it. It's Galata. Off balance by Taylor, and that's not necessarily, I don't think, the shot that Matt Figure had in mind. Back over to Vanderbilt on the shot clock violation. Commodore's up 16. Typically, there's two ways to alleviate that kind of pressure from guards. Putting the ball inside, playing inside to out, and then also making sure that you can cut back door. Combination worked for three a minute ago. This time they moved to Brown for an open look up top. That's the part of this game that, that Cleveland Brown has to improve. He's got to be able to knock down the open shot. Seen him have a couple looks tonight. His best work's been around the rim. Little curl on Porter Bunton turned away this time. And post Taylor team. chasing with a double team. That's a pretty nice ball movement for a lay-in by Richard Henderson. They came with the double team. Typically, when you come with the double team, you want to cut off that passing lane and give them only one option to throw the ball back out. Vanderbilt didn't execute it well that, and then they gave, they paid for it. Continue to drive and dish, move the ball for threes. Wouldn't fall. Roberson working hard. Call for a charge. You see Bryce Drew saying that the charge was taken inside of the circle. Chris Porter Bunt's a little slow getting up, too. Let's see on the camera here. It looks like he was standing either on the circle or maybe a half of a step inside the circle. So the refs got that call right in that situation. Four fouls for Vanderbilt in the half. That's the second one for Roberson. Commodore is led by 13 at the half, but have done nothing to open things up here in the second half. Austin P. staying close. We've seen Austin P. try to run that curl action again, but it's not working for him. Lotta made a contested three in the first half, missed there. Foul on the rebound will go on Vanderbilt. They'll call Roberson for his third. It's really hard to catch a pass that you have to jump that high for and come down and still be able to make a, a contested shot like that. So him missing that shot doesn't mean he's a bad shooter at all. That's a tough shot to make. Well, another speedy first-year Commodore, and Maxwell Evans is in to replace LeChance. Flex action right here. Got them the basket. Works out for a lay-in by Ugba. Alleviating that pressure with the back cuts. Crowd says, let's get things moving a little bit. Bryce Drew says, how about a timeout? Great timeout call right here. I think he wanted to talk to the officials as much as anything. Vanderbilt up 10, 12.47 to play in a music city. Vanderbilt by 10 here in the second half of Memorial Gym in Nashville. Austin P. programming a bit of a, a transitional phase with Matt Figure making his debut tonight, replacing that man, Dave Luce, just one of the great guys, and he was most successful coach in Austin P. history. See those uh, 502 wins, took him to the NCAA tournament four times, including a couple seasons ago. Retired last year, 27 years as head coach of the Governors, and here is the man who replaced him, Matt Figure. As his team in here battling tonight. Not for you. Down 10. A game that looked like might slip away there toward the end of the first half. And they'll be able to hang around after trailing by 13 at halftime. A new look team. Lots of new faces for this Austin P group. And you know, the thought going in was maybe use some of that Frank Martin approach to playing defense, including a, some 3 2 zone we've seen at times tonight. A trap here. Saban Lee had the ball outside. Trey Ivory can't believe it. 
the whistle blew. It's going to actually be on Terry Taylor. It'll be his first and first foul of the second half of the Governors. You saw the freshman Saban Lee. He got trapped right there. Wasn't expecting it. Almost got a turnover, but he did a good job of not giving up the basketball. It's trapped again. Ostapi gets the takeaway. Ivory will get the two. Got an eight-point game. Saban Lee again with the turnover right there. I think they're going to continue to put some pressure on him as a point guard. Bryce Drew is going to have to do a better job of calling some plays that get the ball out of his hands so that he can catch an attack as opposed to just trying to run offense. Evans to the side for a three. Lee came up well short. Glotta has it for the Govs. Has to be looking to make a little run, but they turn it over. Jeff Roberson. Evans to Lee. Trying to wrap around Fee looking for Obina. On the floor and a whistle. And Obina picks up his third foul. Yeah. That was a bad possession for the Commodores right there. Vanderbilt 46, Austin P 38, the under 12 timeout, Memorial Gym. Well, really doing some neat things here at Memorial Gym tonight. The salute to service going on today and then again tomorrow. We saw that cool feature at halftime with the soldiers' names to be worn on the backs of the Vanderbilt football players tomorrow in their game against Kentucky. Here it's opening night for basketball, Vanderbilt's Double figure lead has been trimmed down to eight, 46 38. Commodores leading the Gubs under 12 timeout. Off to be a chance to get a little closer. Their debut under first year coach Matt Figure. It's an eight point game. They're just coming out of cut timeout. They definitely have to execute right here if they're going to have a chance to get back in this. There goes Taylor. Couldn't get it to bounce home. We'll head to the stripe. The foul whistled against Vanderbilt's Jerry Baptiste. That'll be four for Jerry. Tell you what, you have to love the composure of this kid. He's playing hard. He proved that he could do this in the high school level. He's also showing the day that he can do it on the college level as well. Yeah, he committed to Austin P when Dave Luce was coached and decided to stay with it through the coaching change. Misses on the free throw attempt. Coach Matt Figure saying these guys are gonna cause some mismatches. The size and strength. Especially lefty made one or two. Especially in that OVC conference, he's going to have a lot of mismatches most nights, and he's going to be able to take advantage of it. Seven point lead for Vanderbilt. No points in over three minutes for the Commodores. Commodores are going to have to do a better job of being ready to attack off the catch. Too much holding the ball happening. Saw him attack in the first half. See more turnovers here in the second. Ugbo looked like he walked. And he slid a little too much. Again, Jeff Roberson not giving up on the play. He got the turnover on one side, but he sprints back for his team, gets in front of him, and, char and really makes that guy travel. Freshman point guard Saban Lee. The senior Trey Ivory defending. The chance looking inside. Ugbo will be called for the foul. That'll be his third. I do think it's pretty interesting. The only person that's getting the ball down low to go to work is Jeff Roberson. I think that's pretty telling in terms of our, our, our big presence down low. Got it back to the chance of the inbounds of Brown. Shot clock reaches 12. Commodore's got to go to work. Lee, the kick out. They turn it over again. Well, I think the good thing in that possession is he saw where the open guy was. The footwork wasn't good enough to get the ball where it needs to be without turning the ball over. But as a freshman, you're going to get some of that. You're going to see that. I still like what I'm seeing out of Saban Lee, even though he's got a few turnovers here in the second half. Governor's down seven near the midpoint here in the second half. Taylor off balance, well short. Brown able to hang on to the rebound. Daniel's been good when they look to run. Here's a chance for the spin. They crash and a foul against the Governors. I really want people to appreciate 
how good of a move this is. To be able to spin that tight, maintain your balance, get to the basket, hold the guy off with your body, and get the ball up in the air with your offhand, that is difficult to do. And for Raleigh to be able to do that, he came in as a shooter, he's a proven shooter, but that experience, being a point guard last year and the year before, really does help his game tremendously. Love what I'm seeing out of Raleigh in the chance today. Pretty sweet move, got to the foul line. Hit double figures if you can hit another free throw, made two three threes in the first half. Think about this, if he adds five free throws a game to his point average, he's easily a 16 to 18 points a game guy. Average 10, three and three last year. Plata can bump in the jumper. Maybe a cute little stretch here for Vanderbilt. Toy drives. Rolls off, wouldn't have counted anyway, foul on the floor. Joe Toy has got to find more opportunities for him to put his head down and get to the basket like that. He did a great move at the basket where he hesitated for a second, getting himself to the basket. So Vanderbilt wants to see a lot more of that from him. Third foul for Steve Harris. Here's a mismatch. Riley the chance. Let's see how Vanderbilt handles it. Under 10, the chance to pull up. In and out. Commodore's kept it alive. Toy going after it. Everybody on the deck. Austin P. looked like they got a timeout. Now I wonder who called that timeout. Was it the coach? It definitely wasn't the player on the floor. He caught the ball and, and cradled it. So he wasn't the person that called the timeout. Well, the bad news for Austin P is that, that was their next to last time out. And sometimes I wonder if you're better off just taking your chances with the possession right there than learning a timeout in that situation. And that's why I asked the, the question who called yeah. the timeout? Because yeah. in my experience, with as much time as left on the clock, you don't want to be going into the end of this game. You're only down nine points right now, but you only have one timeout. That's tough. Looks like Trey Ivory. I've been the one to call the timeout. You see it right there. Trey Ivory as a, as a point guard. He's got to kind of have a feel for that, but it's tough on a college level. College players don't really have a feel for how many timeouts there are. At the NBA level overseas, you're responsible for knowing every situation in the game. Gals have been able to hang around a nine point game. Taylor down low. Ivory takes a shot. A lot of one on one from the Govs. I don't know if they're going to be able to beat Vanderbilt University with that. Chance another nice spin move. Got it out of there to Austin. Jump in the corner. Bucket. Joe Toy from three. Joe Toy showing a lot of confidence right there. He hesitated. He jabbed him. He felt disrespected. I don't know if you saw that in his <laughs> eyes, but he felt disrespected when the guy didn't move, and so he pulled the three. Guess what? I'm going to go ahead and take this right here. Lead back to a dozen for Vanderbilt. We're under nine to go. Taylor bangs it home and one. You, you have to love this kid, Taylor, as a freshman showing great poise. But look at Joe Toy. You gonna disrespect me like the coach? He's disrespecting me, coach. <laughs> coach, let me take the jumper, coach. Yeah. yeah, did that? Did you? How many times did you tell Coach Stallings that? <laughs> <laughs> there, were, there were definitely some that I missed when I said, Coach, he disrespected me, coach. I had to shoot that. Most of Shane's went in. Taylor makes a free throw, dude. Complete the three-point play. Back to a nine-point game. So the three by Toy, answered by a three-point play from Taylor. By the way, Shane made threes at a clip of 42% during his career. 367 of them. Roberson looking at delivery and one. Cleavon Brown, a nice finish. Go to the free-throw strike. 
Cleavon Brown, you're going to see a lot of that this year. His responsibility is to get into some spaces where people can find him. Jeff Roberson showing you his whole repertoire. I mean, this is guy th that is the glue guy. He's the guy that's gluing all the little things. That's why he's playing. You see these lineups continue to change. The yeah. one person that is always consistent, Jeff Roberson making a great pass. Cle Cleavon Brown being a beneficiary right there. Yeah, you're not seeing a whole lot of number 11 going to the sideline. Foul was on Harris. Brown wraps up the three point play. So consecutive three point trips. Vanderbilt back up by 12, eight and a half to go. Foul was on Harris. That was four for him. So two players in this game with four. Nicely done. Getting to the rim, Deshaun Martin. His first basket of the night. Great athleticism right there. Extending the ball out, making that, that layup. Goes Toy. Puts on the brakes. Connects with a chance. He connects on a three. That's what he does. Yes, I can put it on the floor, but if you really want to know what Riley LeChance wants to do, he wants to shoot the trade ball. So if you're going to disrespect him, He's going to make you pay. He's one of the great shooters in the SEC. Here's a drive and a miss by Ugba. Crashing the glass. Gum got the stick back. Freshman Dayton Gum. Ugba got himself off balance right there and had to throw the shot up. But his teammate was there having his back putting the ball in. 11 point advantage, Vanderbilt. Seven and change to go. Foul will take us to the timeout. Here's Joe Toy. Locates the senior Riley the chance. The three ball. Vanderbilt up 11, 718 to play here in Nashville. Well, second year Vanderbilt coach Bryce Drew drawing up a few things during the under eight timeout. Vanderbilt leading Austin P by 11. Big part of the effort tonight. 13 points from sophomore. Forward Cleavon Brown. Shall be Cleavon. A variety of ways around the rim. There he is. Cleavon's done a great job of just finding spaces where people can get him the ball. There's really an art to that. And then you see him on the defensive end getting the block right there. But there's really an art to finding open spaces and not standing behind people so that when people get you the ball, you can actually do something with it. He's doing a great job tonight. See what he did last season in 34 games. This season, you depend on him. Take him to the hole like he's done tonight. 11-point game. The Govs are going to have to show some heart right here if they're going to get back into this. Well, that foul will go against Avery Ugba. That is four for him. That's a mean free throw is coming up for Vanderbilt. Team foul number seven for Austin Peay. Vanderbilt's been whistled for eight in this half. You see Ivan Chuchak go in. Now, see, this is why you can't really get too caught up on the refs making calls and calling fouls and those kinds of things. This half started out five to zero in fouls in favor of the Govs. We're looking at it right now as eight to seven. They've made up for it. Mm -hmm. That's typically how games go. If you just let the game go along, it'll usually balance itself out. Robertson makes one of two. Yeah, there are some fans that made sure the officials knew there was a 5 0 at that one point. And they weren't wrong. It's just, <laughs> just you know. pointing out something on the, on the uh, scoreboard. Yeah. And Ivory on the wing. As a, as a player, I would do the same thing. Let's see if he gets a dunk. Ah, Austin decides for the lay in instead. Now, 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 Larry is a nice guy. Larry's a nice guy. But you spent a year watching, and you come out, and you get a fast break. There's nobody but you in the, <laughs> in the rim. You got to try to bring the house down. And then there's the train of thought that if it doesn't go so well, you may be uh, having a seat over there by Coach Drew. That's very true. <laughs> that is also <laughs> make very the true. One-hander. So you would have thrown that one down. Definitely. Roberson from deep. In high school, 
Yes. I got a break like that. I tried to windmill from the free throw line. <laughs> How did that go? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say I threw the ball at the backboard in midair and fell before I got to the rim. Oh man. And the next, the next sound I heard was a, was the horn. Was the horn? <laughs> to try to sell it, did you like twist your ankle or something yes. like that? I, def I definitely grabbed my hamstring as yeah. I went back to the bench. But I was done for the night after that. <laughs> Shay Foster High School, most embarrassing moment. Okay. <laughs> Coy to McCarthy goes in for Austin P. I don't imagine you had very many embarrassing moments. I had a few. I had a few. Got dunked on by David Lee. We played Florida my freshman year, and I slid from the basket all the way into the student <laughs> section. Chance and Toy out front for Vanderbilt. Got 10 to shoot. Here goes Toy. Little leaner offline. Tip goes. Wow. That was an interesting basket. Toy with five tonight. Two to go with that three we saw a few minutes back. Vanderbilt all of a sudden, front by 16. Austin B had held ground within single figures, really climb back in things. Chris Porter, Button, he was a veteran presence for this governor's team. He's only scored four tonight, though. That was a great hop step to avoid the defense, get into some space where he could get that shot off. Cross under five minutes to play. Brown with the screen. So here there's really no play. They're just, they're just playing basketball. Time to shoot. Austin going to work. Deals inside. Roberson lays it home. Great end of pass. shot clock. Good work. Great pass at the end of the shot clock right there. That's a situation that kind of just worked out. They were just playing basketball. They wasn't drawing up. Just great players making great plays. That's what it takes sometimes. And necessarily have to be prettiest possession of the book that worked out okay that's what it takes most of the time in the SEC and look at that little floater by McCarthy off the baseline that was nice the freshman from Spain once you get to SEC basketball conference play in most conferences there are very few plays that actually work toy season opening to the rack the finish and the foul great Great body control by Joe Toy right there. That's when he's at his best. Going to the basket, getting the contact, finishing over the big, getting the and one. Junior from Chicago. Have a free throw when we come back. Vanderbilt leading by 16, under four to play. Joe Toy with a bucket and a foul as we went to the break. He'll have one free throw. Vanderbilt leading by 16 against Austin P. Trying to get this season off to a good start with a victory. Commodores will head over to Belmont to play Monday night at the Curb Center. A little neighborhood matchup. Okay, we will indeed as Toy missed the free throw. Last check, Belmont was leading out of Washington. Opening the season in Seattle. Vanderbilt get it back here. By the way, before we run out of time, I want to say uh, congratulations to the Vanderbilt women's soccer team. They Beat Ohio State tonight in the uh, NCAA tournament. It was the first win in 19 years in the tournament for the uh, Vanderbilt program. So, congratulations to Coach Darren Ambrose and his team. Stephanie Amack with the uh, winning goal in the 89th minute. Travel here will give it back to the Governors. 3:45 to go. Joe Toy, as good as a as good as he is going to the basket, he's got to do a better job of being decisive on the catch when he gets the basketball. This Austin P team, a lot of credit. Coming here with a lot of new guys and a first year coach blocked on Ugba. Commodore's in transition. Like right there, Joe Toy should have shot that basketball. There's no reason for him not to shoot that basketball. I'll stretch it out and use some clock. Fun weekend here on the Vanderbilt campus. Doubleheader and hoops tonight. And football coming up tomorrow on the SEC Network. Commodores in Kentucky at 3 o'clock Central. Toy. There's your finish. Have another chance at a three-point play. 
That would have been very LeBron-like had he dunked that. He looked like, if you see, he's going up right here. He looks like he wants to dunk it. He got the contact. Maybe I'll just lay it in. Those are the kind of plays that get you to the next level. When you start dunking those, that, that gets you to the next level. Avery Ugba just fouled out, picks up his fifth at the 302 mark. This guy is some kind of athlete. Joe Toys put together a nice second half. Hit double figures if he can hit a free throw here. Jeff Roberson checks out of the game. And we uh, certainly noticed as other players rotated in and out, he was the one constant in the lineup throughout this second half. And Vanderbilt was able to stretch the lead back out to double figures. Toy twice has been unable to finish off a three point play. Jeff Roberson is definitely the glue guy for the Vandy Commodores. He's got to be one of the more valuable players in the SEC as you see Trey Ivory on a drive. One foul will be on Cleavon Brown, his second. Now you're going to see some of the younger guys getting some valuable playing time at the end of this game right here. These are not garbage minutes. This is valuable time. He's going to give you an opportunity to get some film, to go back and study. And see what you're going to do. Ivory missed badly on the free throw attempt. Willis and Lee go in. Austin Lachance, Toy go to the bench. Great job by the veterans to come out and get the job done early so that these young boys can get a chance to get some experience. Two misses at the foul line by Ivory. Martin took it back up. We'll head there now. Obina picks up his fourth foul. It's 10 for Vanderbilt. Two shots on every foul after this with 2.49 to go. At this point in the season, there is no real garbage time, is there? I mean, you're still trying to get your feet under you, especially for guys that haven't played very much. Martin made the free throw. Absolutely. I was having a conversation with my wife before the game. She was asking about getting into game shape. There's nothing that gets you in game shape other than games. It really doesn't matter how much conditioning you do, all that kind of stuff. Games get you in game shape. There's nothing like the pressure of playing in a game. You can be in practice or in the gym by yourself working on the jumper, but it's, you're right, it's not the same. So the atmosphere, you can't, there, there are things that you can't simulate. You can't simulate the fans in here. You can't simulate the game being on TV and what that means, playing in a power conference. In the corner look, and three made by Max Evans. First three of his Commodore career. I said it in the first half, I'll say it again. The guy averaged 30 in high school. The one thing he can do, fill it up. Freshman from Houston. Got some Texans on this Vanderbilt squad. Jeff Roberson from there as well, and Cleveland Brown from San Antonio. Gum, contested shot, went to Obina. That was the second. Yeah, Evans, he took some contact right there. No whistle, just out of bounds. That was the second block that Saban Lee has had on a jumper playing defense. The guy's going to be a really good defender, but you see Max attacking the basket. I'm surprised he didn't get a foul called in his favor in that possession. As they figure Chuchak held his ground, got the block. Now, we said there's no garbage minutes for players and coaches at this time in the season, but referees don't play by the same rules. <laughs> well, 100 seconds to go. You're saying they don't mind letting a few things go late in the game when it's uh, no, not it, in doubt? Guaranteed there's going to be some fouls that don't get called. Willis couldn't make the three. Gum will take it to the hole and score. Strong, strong move and strong finish right there. Another guy from Bowling Green, Kentucky. Played at South Warren High School, the all-time leading scorer there. In and out. Three wouldn't go for Evans. Obina get a late game trip to the free throw line. I'm hearing some good comparisons to Festus Azili, who we know is a world champion playing with the Golden State Warriors. Obina is going to be just as good, if not better, than he is. 
And a young man from Nigeria and attended Virginia Academy over in Ashburn, Virginia. That is his first point as a Vanderbilt Commodore. He had a lot of other places interested in him, including Florida and Oklahoma and Clemson and Virginia Tech. And Festus is my friend, so I can say this. But Obina definitely has a better look at free throw shot than Festus. <laughs> Fest says, hey, you want to take a look at the O'Brien trophy? <laughs> <laughs> I can't compete with that. <laughs> That's another look at the free throw line and made it that time after the violation. Well, this doubleheader here at Memorial has a minute to go. There's no, there's no garbage minutes for the Doves either. This is valuable time for these guys to be able to prove that they deserve more playing time. Well, it's more good defense inside. Mm. Peyton missed saving Lee trailing that play after he gave it up. They bring it back out. Austin P will have another tough road game coming up next. They'll play at Virginia on Monday. Ready for some pack line defense. Good pass right there by Peyton Willis. Three ball, wouldn't go. My guess is Vanderbilt would not take another shot. Shot clock off. Gum couldn't hit the three. Long rebound chased down by Henderson. Trying to get it back to Gum. Two check. Broken up. That'll do it. Successful start to this 17-18 season for second-year coach Bryce Drew and the Vanderbilt Commodores. They defeat Austin P. 73-7 to 54. Matt Figger makes his debut as governor's coach. Commodores got three players to 13 points. Brown, Roberson, and Lachance. Shane Foster all in all, a pretty nice uh, performance. Austin Peay got it back to single figures, but Vanderbilt kind of slammed the door at that stretch in the middle of the second half. Vanderbilt did a great job making the little plays. They hustled, got a lot of offensive rebounds, defended well, which led to them being able to use their speed and athleticism on the break, getting some garbage baskets, and, and Cleavon Brown was the beneficiary of a lot of assists tonight. Vandy made nine threes. Roberson had a double-double with 13 and 10. For Shane Foster, Doug Stanton, our entire SEC Network crew, I'm Kevin Ingram saying so long from Nashville. This has been a presentation of the SEC ESPN Network. Vanderbilt wins by 19.